Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Thursday, March 23rd, 5.05 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in a correction. Tech continues to hold up extremely well. Add gold and gold stocks uh, to that also, and that's a, a significance of what's happening in the banking sector check over here at the trend gauge we've got leadership mark neutral they're really holding up fine but it's hard to have any confidence in anything uh, when you've got a market acting like a casino uh, so we got it neutral with the green arrow underneath then taking a look at the five major indexes across the th the three time frames that we track we're negative on the short term 21 day moving average for the five indexes beneath there, the NASDAQ 100 being the exception, medium term, also showing red downtrend, again, the NASDAQ 100 being the exception, and 200-day moving average, S&P pulled back and held undercut and held it today, undercut and reclaim, NASDAQ 100 firmly above the other three indexes, languishing small and mid caps continue to stay on the weak side because of their heavy weighting in financials. So what happened today after a very weak close yesterday, and I, I mentioned in the video that it was primarily on some, something that um, Jerome Powell said about no rate cuts planned for the rest of the year, but about the same time he was speaking, uh, Yellen was useless bureaucratic hack Janet Yellen was uh, on Capitol Hill saying, we have no plans to support additional deposits at this time. And then um, that helped with the sell-off. And uh, overnight, we uh, everybody gathered themselves and uh, the futures went into a gap up situation that turned into a gap and go. At one point, the S&P was up 1.8%, the NASDAQ up over 2%. And just as, uh, just as nicely as that hour and 40 minute opening uh, trend up happened, we promptly reversed at 11.10, trended lower uh, to uh, gave up most of it uh, down to where we opened. And then Yellen, once again, talking on Capitol Hill, uh, prompted a 1% uh, sweep lower. But then she said, we will take additional action for deposits if it's necessary. And then the market shot up 1%. I don't know what she said after that, but it dropped another percent. But then it shot up another percent. She just basically turned the market into a casino with her inconsistent uh, statements. It really, between the Fed and the Treasury Secretary, it's hard to have any confidence in our financial markets. And I think that's leading into some of the nutty action that you see. What continues to hold up is strong tech stocks with solid balance sheets, uh, anything related to gold or gold stocks, anything related to AI, semiconductors acting fine, but the rest of it uh, pretty much weak across the board. And you can flip a coin as to whether or not different sectors are going to end up 1% or down percent by the end of the day. Uh, that's a casino. We have no uh, we have no edge in a market like that. We took off some additional, uh, locked in some additional gains today, took some off the board, cut back to just the holdings that we have. The stock, the charts of what we have look just fine. I've got about 100 charts that look as if there's nothing negative going on in the market. The problem is the other 1,400 charts in the uh, S&P 1500 uh, that are aware of what's going on in the market. So. Uh, bottom line is fewer and fewer stocks are holding the market up. That's where we're concentrated right now. But And we have positive gains uh, in all of them. They've all outperformed the S&P during their holding period. Uh, we got rid of our index in the NASDAQ 100 when it uh, tried to make a, another failed breakout just like yesterday. Uh, we took some off yesterday, took the rest of it off today, took our long semiconductor ETF off and are just holding uh, seven positions in gold right now. You'll see that when we get to the tail of the tape. So on the day, G6, 
uh, basically flat, uh, dragged down by Art K. They got hit with two of the top 10 holdings in their square, got a big short seller report against it, accusing it of fraud, and Coinbase got something called a Wells notice, which means that the SEC is going to preparing to take action against them. And between that, that dragged down Art K. Um, and put the G6 basically flat on the day. S&P 500, as I said, up as much as 1.8%, down as much as a half a percent, uh, closed up 0.3, NASDAQ 100, strong all day, up over 2%. That pulled back to a half of a percent gain before rebounding uh, late to a 1.2% gain, Dow up 0.2. Mid caps and small caps continue to struggle, down 0.4%. Global 6040 up 0.3, in-house protection up 0.78. We'll get to the tail of the tape and charts of interest, but first we will hit the indexes as we always do and uh, talk about what we do here at Revere. This public service announcement, our number one job is to protect the downside for our clients, protect these bear market losses, these all occur under the 200-day moving average. We're languishing right around the 200-day on the S&P, three indexes below it, only the NASDAQ 100 above it. Uh, our job is to protect capital when the market gets to a healthier posture, the gains take care of themselves. Uh, that's why you see our varying degree of, uh, of uh, how deep we wade into the market. It depends on a lot of things. Uh, including how leaders are acting and how the indexes are acting. And uh, right now, after the banking sell-off, the banking crisis, we've uh, recovered the 200-day moving average. Things were looking great yesterday afternoon until the harsh fail. Things were looking great this morning into until the bad sell-off. Let's take a look at a five-minute chart on the S&P here. Here you can see late uh, after Powell up, harsh sell-off down. Uh, here's the gap up and trend up, and then the trend lower, and then here's 1% down, 1% up, 1% down, 1% up. This is the casino action I'm talking about. Between 39 at 20 and 39.60 for the last two hours, just ridiculous. Uh, and as I said, we have no edge in that market, so we're down to just the stocks that are holding strong. Uh, at times, we were varying between uh, whether or not we should be adding index exposure on the S&P today while we're trending higher Then by the end of the day. Should we be adding uh, on a break of the 21 and a break of the 200? Should we be adding index exposure lower? And when you go from one to the other within an hour, that tells you everything you need to know about the market and uh, how strong uh, you should be playing things. So, I mean, it looks, it looks varying. But, Two different times today, it looked like the market was going to take off to the upside, then it looked like it was going to split wide open. And until we get this banking situation figured out, uh, I'm looking at UKRE making a lower closing low today. KBE, uh, KRE is a regional bank. This one's the bigger bank, still making a closing, uh, a new closing low. XLF, the broader financial sector, right on the cusp of a closing low. Uh, two of the banks that we have big concerns about, First Republic Bank uh, making a new closing low, and PacW is another one, uh, PacWest, close to, actually, that is a new closing low. So uh, until we can get this uh, banking situation figured out, the market really has a hard time going higher, especially the S&P without financials participating. On the other hand, here's the NASDAQ 100, and this is really a thing of beauty, but we've come straight up off the bottom, tried to break out yesterday, failed, tried to break out again today, failed. Uh, we're trending nicely above the ADMA. We locked in our gains on QLD. Uh, five uh, tranches that we bought, all profitable. We booked that today. Uh, we'll see where the market takes us. We have plenty of exposure in stocks that are acting like this. You'll see when we go through the tail of the tape and we'll ride those. Uh, until they either get stopped or until the market, um, or we'll just keep raising our stops as they go higher. Okay, so that's the NASDAQ 100. Let's go to the Dow Jones. Uh, tried to reclaim the 200 today, ran into the declining 21, closed back below the 200-day moving average today. Not a good look there. Uh, mid caps, uh, near a new closing low, didn't quite break the recent lows, but uh, this tells me the banking sector isn't getting any better. 
because this is littered with uh, banks and also oils, which uh, is certainly haven't been helping either. And then small caps IWM, new closing low, breaking below the recent lows. Uh, not a confidence builder there. Let's look at the VIX. Uh, pretty volatile day today, up and down, 20% uh, range on this, 20 over 20% range. Uh, last two days, lower than the panic range. Uh, so I guess you could call that a plus, but it can't, doesn't want to get below 20. Uh, hanging around this 21-day uh, moving average between the 200-day moving average and the 50-day moving average. Can't figure out what it wants to do either. Let's go to the dollar. The dollar started out weak today, finished at the highs of the day. As the dollar got stronger, the market got weaker. You can see the gap down and trending lower while the market's taken off. And then uh, shortly after, well, here's 11 o'clock. It bottomed about the same time that the market's topped and then started just trending higher. Uh, in the face of what the markets were doing. Let's flip to bonds now, the broad bond index BND. There was a, a divergence in bonds today, the 30 year about flat on price. Uh, overall bonds basically did this gap down, price gap down, and then late in the day, price got higher. So that means yields came down as money was flooding into bonds as the market sell off in the afternoon accelerated. There's the broad bond index. Here's the uh, corporate bond index, really the same thing. Uh, money flowing into these while uh, the market is going lower. Uh, junk bonds down today. You can see they kind of go in concert with what stocks are doing. Um, and uh, finally, uh, TLT. So TLT started with the gap down. Uh, it was priced lower most of the day and then uh, took off, closed near flatline. In fact, in fact, exactly at the flatline today. Uh, but its price went higher as the yield went lower, as uh, the shenanigans on uh, from Yellen were taking place. Here's the 10 year. Again, the last hour isn't in here because this trading stops at three o'clock. Uh, but you can see with this, with the gap down, trending lower and then accelerating lower. So that's the yield going down as we're panicking, as people are buying more bonds. Uh, TYX, the longer end of the curve, uh, not as much today. It did sell off later in the day to close basically unchanged. Let's flip the gold and silver, which continue to be a bright spot in the market. Here's GLD making a higher high. After this breakout of the cup and handle, we have a two and a half percent position in GLD, GDX gold stocks. Not quite broken out yet, but gathering relative strength. Also making a recent high during this run up. Silver, uh, another recent high. Bitcoin, which went to risk off yesterday, uh, reclaimed most of that today, up 7%. So those are the major uh, indexes that we show in every video. Here's the tail of the tape. You can pause this to read through it. I'm just going to hit the highlights. Uh, before the open, jobless claims were below estimate. This isn't good. The Fed doesn't want this. They want to see more unemployment. Uh, and then yell an additional deposit action if necessary, just complete opposite of what she said yesterday to Capitol Hill. Just, I, just disgust me. Uh, day count, we went from one down to basically uh, zero after this action today with the market not being able to make it up its mind. And we closed just about on the ADMA. So that's a zero count also. Minus two count on the 21. Volatile. Uh, got above and failed versus the 21, got below and reclaimed versus the 200. Again, casino-like action. Uh, here are the sectors, uh, gold and silver, solars, tech, semiconductor, software. Uh, the dollar started lower, ended up higher. Bond yield started higher, ended up lower. Bond prices started lower, ended up higher. Weakness continues in regional banks, oils, retail was weak today as well as the defensive sectors. Just because the market is uh, volatile doesn't mean you can camp out in staples, utilities, or real estate as those charts don't look uh, so good either. So portfolio-wise, we added to ONON. We got a tiger by the tail there on a that massive gap up uh, for our biggest position now. Uh, we sold, as I said, SoxL and QLD limited to just these holdings that you see here uh, in blue, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stocks and GLD. Uh, bottom line, not good. 
Uh, it's yellow, but when you've got uh, red and uh, green intermixed and that action of the last two hours is just ridiculous. Uh, gap up, trend up 1.8%, then trend lower to red and then volatile plus or minus 1% four times in the last two hours. Every day we survive gets us closer to the next bull market uh, where leadership quality stocks, and we've already identified them, they'll lead the market, uh, they'll go up 20, 30, 40%, and I just can't wait for that day. On the other hand, what if the market completely breaks down? Well, we're ready for that too. Our holdings, we've got stops in place for all of them. If we start uh, trending lower on the S&P 500 under the 200 day moving average and the slope turns back lower, we'll be short that. Uh, and sticking with the stocks that are working, if the entire market rolls over, uh, we'll go to net to flat or net short. We've got a plan either way. And we detail it every night in these videos. Uh, uh, on behalf of our clients and our followers. So let's get to some charts of individual names now. Uh, we'll start out with some standouts. ONON today, uh, we did our fourth buy uh, up 12% on the day, it was up over 15% at one point, huge volume. Uh, I mean, this, was a, this is a stock that was trading on average volume uh, around uh, 2.3 million shares. Today it traded 18 million shares. It's growing up very strongly. And this this is resembling, in fact, it's even stronger than that Facebook uh, July 2013 gap up uh, that I had been detailing. That doesn't mean that everything's gonna be uh, fine and dandy and it's gonna go to the stars, but uh, we're certainly off to a good start with this and we've got good cost basis on uh, the buys that we've made on ON ON. A uh, couple more today, KB Holdings uh, gapped up as a home builder. These continue to confound the experts. Uh, interest rates are higher, but they're frankly, they're just what they're saying in their conference calls is there are not enough houses out there uh, being built for the people that want them. People aren't selling them because they've got mortgages that they locked in Prior to the time when uh, in when uh, mortgage rates went higher, nobody's going to sell their house uh, and give up that low mortgage. So the existing homes, uh, the supply is weak. Uh, they're making up for it by the home builders supplying the houses for uh, people that need them. Uh, Netflix had a nice day today. Apparently, it's new ad. Uh, uh, ad tier, no cost, is uh, getting some uh, nice numbers. So Netflix uh, trying to put in a bottom today after a sell-off from 380 to below 300. Uh, AEHR made a higher high today. Uh, this thing's looking great. Has earnings uh, late next week. That'll certainly tell a tale. Uh, AI, a lot of the more speculative names. Uh, AI up 9% today, looking good. Uh, and SE, this is this is an internet retailer. Uh, breaking above its uh, gap up. Again, another case of where something that gapped up on big volume, you know, you can't just say it's extended and ignore it. This is this is how big runs start. It was 860% volume, up 22% on the day, pulled back, held the ADMA just the way we wanted it to, riding it higher. This is in the face of some market volatility and made a higher high today. Uh, looking good there. And, uh, Two that didn't look so good. I mentioned uh, uh, Kathy Woods, two of her top 10 holdings there, square down 15%. On a short seller report, accusing them of fraud and Coinbase down 14% on the Wells notice. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. As always, love to hear from you. Email is donnaerviraasset.com. The phone is 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. Remember, it's not how much you make in the market, it's how much you can keep. We've got pockets of the market, market acting very well. The majority of the market is acting like garbage. Uh, stick with what's working. Uh, when the market act trades like it did the last two afternoons, it's tough to have conviction uh, in anything. And with that, I'll wrap up Thursday, March 23rd. This is Don Vandenborg telling it like it is. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.